I haven't been able to find a single scripture in the Bible describing a pre-tribulation rapture. There are many scriptures describing what we would call a rapture, but all of that occurs at Jesus' return. That means that God's people will be here for the tribulation, for the implementation of the mark of the beast and for the no buy no sell period. Therefore, we need to prepare our homes and our families, we need survival skills, we need to know how to acquire resources from the wilderness and how to survive during that period. There are a lot of natural disasters that are prophesied to precede these events as well. So today I'm going to share some of the scriptures that I have found that have convinced me that there is not going to be a pre-tribulation rapture and I'm going to share them in context with you. I'm Clarice, welcome to the Live Ready channel. This video is not to discourage you, instead we should be encouraged. In every instance in our lives where we face tribulation or trials, it's the opportunity for God to step in and to help us through that. An opportunity for us to give Him glory. Where we are weak and under pressure, He steps in, like Daniel in the lion's den and Shadrach, Mesach and Abednego in the fire. And if we think that the events in the world at the moment are hectic, then what's to come is going to be much worse. We need to prepare for that and we have enough time to prepare now. We're going to face a lot of tribulation, that's why we need bug out bags and why we need to prepare our home for the time that we can remain in it. During the time where the scroll judgments, the bowl judgments and the trumpet judgments are unleashed on the earth, we see a lot of natural disasters. We see the depletion of resources, we see famine, we see um, a lot of death and destruction and the resources and the lifestyle that we know now are not going to exist during that time. As far as a rapture goes, God has never removed his people from the face of their adversaries or from the face of tribulation. But he's been in the fire with us and he's been there to take us through the sea. I feel it's really important for every person who lives a lifestyle of preparedness or who is a survivalist to share this because there are so many people who say that they don't need to be prepared, they don't need survival skills because they won't be here for the tribulation because they will be raptured. But there is no scripture in the Bible that talks about a pre-tribulation rapture. It's very timeline specific, so we have to look at where that scripture fits into that timeline. Let's look at a couple of these scriptures. In Matthew 24, we see that the disciples were asking Jesus, how would they know the time for him to return would be near? And what would be the signs of the end times? Now note how Jesus specifically says, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. He doesn't say the pre-trib rapture, he says his return will be as this. In Matthew Matthew 24 verse 39 to 41, the scripture reads, and no, not until the flood came. Now Jesus is talking here about Noah and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the son of man be. Two will be in the field, one will be taken, one will be left. Two women will be grinding at the mill, one will be taken, one will be left. But when we read that in context and we see that Jesus said, so also shall be the coming of the son of man, we see that he relates these two events to each other. That tells us that we will be collected to Jesus when he returns. He didn't say pre-tribulation. Jesus does not return before the tribulation, only after the tribulation. We find the return of Jesus described in Revelation 19 verse 11. And this is pretty much at the end of the tribulation. When we read down from Revelation 19 to Revelation 20, we see that it describes in verse 4 the first resurrection. Now keep in mind, the first resurrection is at or just after Jesus' return. Now the next rapture scripture that we often quote is 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 14 to 17. 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 14 to 17 reads, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them also which sleep in Jesus, God will bring with him. For this, we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we, which are alive and remain, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. When we read this scripture and we read that whole passage there, or you can even go and read the whole chapter, it describes us being caught up in the air to be with Christ. That once again is interpreted as a rapture scripture. But again, 
It states, if you read a bit further down, that this will not precede the dead in Christ rising first. So if the dead in Christ rise first, then we will be caught up in the air to be with God. Now the dead in Christ, as we just said, only rise after Jesus' return. We go back to Revelation 20 verse 4. Once again, we see that we will be here for the tribulation. And the most important thing that we can do to prepare for that period of time is to be in right standing with God, have a relationship with Him, accept Jesus' gift of salvation and ensure that you are spiritually prepared first. It doesn't help to have a house full of supplies, a bug out bag packed and all the wilderness skills that you could master in a lifetime if you are not spiritually prepared. Now please note that I cannot quote the entire Bible in one video. So the onus is on you to go and read the scriptures, to go and study them for yourself and to go and read them in context. The same applies to 1 Corinthians 15 verse 51 to 52 as does 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 16 to 17 or 14 to 17. Again, we see the dead in Christ rise first. The Bible says, behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. Now a lot of people People interpret this as a rapture scripture as well. At the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. Again, the dead are raised incorruptible and then we shall be changed. Again, when we read that in context of when Jesus returns and when the dead are raised incorruptible, we see the dead in Christ rise after Jesus returns and only then shall we be changed. So again, there's no pre-tribulation rapture here. The rapture or what we're describing as being caught up in a rapture only happens at Jesus' return or after the first resurrection. That means that we need to prepare ourselves for the events that occur during the tribulation. If a great earthquake comes, we need to know what to do. We need to know where to seek shelter if we can no longer stay in our homes. And we need to know how to find resources. There's another scripture in 1 Thessalonians 1 verse 10. The scripture reads, And to wait for the Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. Now a lot of people interpret the word wrath there as tribulation, but Jesus didn't die to deliver us from tribulation. He died so that on the day of judgment, we would not suffer the penalty of death for our sin. That is the wrath that he has delivered us from. He delivered us from death, which is far worse. And then this is interpreted that we won't have to experience the tribulation. The Bible is the standard by which we measure all things. And according to all of the previously mentioned scripture, we will be here for the tribulation. Trust me, I'd also like to think that we won't, but it's dangerous to excuse complacency. And don't misunderstand me, I'm not saying that we should rely only on our possessions or provisions that we store. We should rely on God to save us, but God also warns us so that we can prepare because we have physical needs and we have a responsibility to see to those needs. He said, you will eat bread by the sweat of your brow. This means that you need to work for your food. That includes the tribulation period. The parable of the 10 virgins is a great example and it applies spiritually as well as physically and we see that here as well. Preparedness is actually a biblical principle. There are many examples throughout the Bible where God warned his people of impending disaster and those who heeded the warning were saved. But there is a responsibility in that for us. We have to action something here. There is a difference between preparing and hoarding. And preparedness should not come from a place of fear. Not unless it's reverent fear of God. It should come from the wisdom to have foresight. Joseph storing grain is a great example of this. He had the wisdom to store food in advance because God warned him that there would be a famine. And for anyone who thinks you're crazy to prepare, people still ridicule Noah to this day for having built an ark. Now having said that, there is no way to determine exactly what day or hour these things will be implemented. And whatever you have prepared and not needed, God will use to help others. It's better to be prepared and not need it than not be prepared. Again, we think of the parable of the 10 virgins. It's also why we store some provisions for ourselves so that when it comes to the no buy, no sell period, at least for a period of time, we will have some provisions. It's also why we have to own our survival skills so that if we need to acquire resources from the wilderness, we can do that too. So we need to prepare for the no buy, no sell period that we are warned about. There are many ways to do this, even without finances. Skills are free. Learn survival skills. We need to learn how to build shelters, how to navigate, how to use comm systems. We need to know how to source water and how to make fire. If you're watching this at a moment when you should have been prepared, but you either delayed or you didn't have the means, the most important thing you can do to prepare is to have a relationship with God. 
couple of things that you can start doing to prepare. And I want to remind you that there are a lot of natural disasters prophesied in the book of Revelation. We're talking earthquakes, famine, our usual food and water sources depleted or contaminated, the destruction of the earth, the vegetation, that includes our food. Hail and other disasters that will see homes and shelters demolished. That's why we have to pack bag out bags so that if we are displaced from our homes, we can actually survive outside of our normal environment. So we need to know how to choose a campsite, how to find water, how to use a comm system, how to prepare for a period where we cannot buy or sell. We need to know how to build shelters in the wilderness or even just in urban areas where your current shelter is no longer viable. How to navigate, how to find food. It's important to know how to cross rivers safely and how to treat injuries, especially in the wilderness. There are other things that we can start working on as well. Tracking, how to remain concealed and packing a bug out bag and what kinds of things you need in that emergency bag so that if you need to evacuate at a moment's notice, you've got a bag that will take care of your needs needs for at least a period of 72 hours, what to prepare, where to place caches of resources, etc. I want to encourage you to start preparing today, own your survival skills, ensure that you've got supplies in your home for the no buy no sell period, grow your own food. There are a lot of things that you can do even on a budget to prepare. I hope that you have found this encouraging. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. Until the next time, live ready.